One, can you name the mascot of every team in the NCAA tournament seated 11 through 16? A Will Kane show quiz. Two, sports is changing right underneath our feet. An earthquake from NIL to transfers to sports betting. Will it be better? I don't know. Will it be worse? I just know sports is changing. And three, Fox Sports college basketball broadcaster John Fanta to walk us through his picks, the best picks, long shots, and favorites to win March Madness. It's the Will Kane Show on Fox News Podcast, Apple, Spotify, and for subscription always on YouTube, streaming live Monday through Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern Time at foxnews.com, the Fox News YouTube channel, and the Fox News Facebook page, always available on podcast or on YouTube via subscription. It is a sports-exclusive Friday, March Madness edition for the Will Kane Show. So let's get to it with story number one. Story number one, can we actually, how much do we know about college basketball? Can we even name the mascots of your 11 through 16 seeds in the NCAA tournament? We thought we might have a Will Kane show quiz today and pit me against everyone else on this show, against young establishment James Laverty, against tinfoil Pat. There has been an honor system that we will hold people to, that we will use intelligence service level detection should anyone have cheated Mm. or done homework or studied on the mascots of these various programs. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the regions, four regions in the NCAA tournament bracket, and we're going to go Will versus James twice and Will versus Pat twice to see can I beat the staff on naming the mascots of your low seeds, your 11 through 16s, in the NCAA tournament. Your host today, two a days, Dan. We're ready. And I can't confirm or deny that James has been cheating or not this whole time over here. I mean, I can't see his phone, what he's been doing this whole time. But, you know, if he gets way too many right, then we'll know. I can, I'll, I can give you my Pats. phone. You can see what I've been doing. Ten full Pats down there in Florida and totally incapable of being held accountable. But James is suspect. It's All just, right. We got Instagram. At this we point, Twitter. we feel like we've got to know each other. We got Capital James One. is suspect. All right. I would, here, I would never got messages. All right, here we go. I got some some music. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get it going. Nice. All right, Will, we're starting with you. Let's start in the East region. We're going with number okay. eleven, Duquesne, which we were talking about a lot. What are what is Duquesne? Duquesne. Duquesne mm-hmm. in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Duquesne sounds like a school that would select a bird, though, not a stealer. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like, like a, like the Duquesne Blue Jays. Like, but I could be just mixing them up with Drake as well. I don't know what Drake is, but those sounds like schools that would pick a bird that's not tough and make it sound tough. So I'm gonna go with the Jays, the Duquesne Jays. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. Oh. They are the Dukes, the Duquesne Dukes. Oh, it is a Duke, and actually, okay. a newer, a newer version of their mascot is now a lion. So that's next. No, I didn't make any sense. I know. I have no idea. There's All right, a royal royalty connection. Next for James, number twelve UAB, which may have been mentioned at <sighs> some point. What do you think, James? You know what? I mean, I'm going to go full transparency here. When Patrick said it earlier, I wrote it down. So I, I think I got to go with another. We could give Patrick uh, one point there. Well, what is it? The, the dragon. Well. Oh, that was wrong? Well, the, what is the dragon is the name. They're not the dragons. Is it a, a, a flying dragon? A, a green dragon? No. Uh, I'm not giving it no, to you, buddy. That's a, that, yeah, it's over. He it's, lost. It's over. They are the Blazers. With Blaze the dragon is their mascot. Ah. So the Blazers. Ah. Yeah, what mascots, not actual ah. team names. Okay. Oh, it's ma- oh, okay. we're doing team names. I just <laughs> yeah. keep saying yes. mascot. Yeah, yeah, team names. We're doing team names. Okay. All right. Half Will, a point. Will, next one. This is kind of an easy one. Uh, number 13, Yale. Uh, Bulldogs. Yep. That's correct. That's an easy one. So you got one point already. That's about it. All right. So we'll go with James. Moorhead State, 14th ranked Moorhead State. Bears. Is that your final answer? Yeah. 
That is incorrect. Moorhead State is the Eagles. They are the Eagles, with the Eagle being named Beaker is their uh, actual yeah. mascot. All right. Number 15, South Dakota State, Will. What do you go with? Number 15, South Dakota State. Uh, South Dakota State, I believe, is the Jackrabbits. That is correct. Very good. Will gets two points. Boom! I already Heck won yeah. the region. I didn't think anyone would get any of these, so I'm really proud of you. <laughs> Give right. him his last one just to see if he can get off the zero. Number 16, point. Stetson. This one is kind of an easy one if you really think about it. That's a little hint. They're they're somewhat local. Jersey? Stetson. Not local. They're in Florida. Think uh, about Stetson. Steelers. That is incorrect. They're the Hatters. Think about hats. Stetson hats. Ah. Yeah. John named after that's John. That's one B. region. That's one region for your show's host here. That's all right. Let's go. Next that's region, me lot. versus tinfoil pat. All right, Tim Foyle, Pat, we got the West region. Um, let's go with Will. New Mexico, what, are the, what is New Mexico? New Mexico are the Lobos. That is correct. Very Ooh, good. Very good. All right, we have number 12, Grand Canyon for Tim Foyle, Pat. The Lopes. The Lopes. Oh, come on. Well, Come technically, yeah. I'll give it to you. They're the antelopes. Nah, but that's, 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 that's technically not correct. Well, I, uh, you're it's not giving it to him? All the headlines. You're not giving it to him. Patrick, what is lope short for? Antelope. All right. Okay. Wanted to make sure he got it. Yeah. We'll, we'll give it to him. One to one. All right. We got Will Charleston. Number 13, Charleston. Mm. It's a common. Mm. I'll give I'll give hints. It's a common no, no, enough. No, no, no. I get yeah no. no 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 he's halfway into his hint he's got to at least finish that one it's a common enough a common en- college basketball mascot actually this might benefit me uh okay the, the charleston wildcats close but no cigar the cougars charleston cougars uh-huh. that makes sense. all right uh pat we got number 14 colgate is next what do you got Oh, crap. I feel like it's a bird. Um, I want to say Cardinals. That is incorrect. They are the Raiders. Oh. <laughs> they are the Raiders. Raiders. Still one to one. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. Then we got Long Beach State <clears throat> is next. Number 15 for Will. Long Beach State. I should know this. I played them in water polo. Can they we were just talking about our, them? Like, this was Pe- Pepperdine played Long Beach. No. Oh, come on, Will. Long Beach State. Long Beach like, State. I'm somewhere between like. I'll give you the mascot's Bucks name. Rose, it won't help you. It's LB. Lightning. Yeah, I want help. LB is the name of the mascot. No, that doesn't do anything. I know it doesn't. Um, Long Beach State. They're black and gold. I know that. That won't help you. Um. They're not the Vaqueros. I know they're not the Vaqueros. Uh, we need an answer. The Long Beach State Lightning. They are the Sharks. Long Beach State Sharks. sharks. Yep. All right. Next up, Patrick, okay. for the last one of the West Region, we got Wagner. Wagner is your team. What is the team name? Hmm. I remember so many of them. I could give you a good NFL hint. There's a player with that last name that ha- oh, played on a team that is this mascot. Come oh, come well, on. Well, that's no, horrible. No, 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 no. You can't give him that. Well, of all the hints, you gave me LB and you hey. gave him the Seahawks. You basically said, hey, Patrick, it's the Seahawks. <laughs> <laughs> I had to help him out a little bit. Come on. I was going to say Ravens and then no, but now. No, I, I'd probably say Ravens or something, something right. bird like. Well, I'm so you were gonna get Seahawks. Okay, to me, I'm gonna get Seahawks. I mean, I would get it now. I got the. I wouldn't. I've gotten it before. All right, sorry. Well, I screwed yeah, up. I for, we I need a tiebreaker that, though. Is it? Do you have a tiebreaker, Dan, for me and Patrick? It's one to one. Um. Yeah. Let's do one from the Midwest. We can region. roll it over. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do one for the Midwest yeah, we'll, region. We'll move to the next region. Okay. Keep right. it Will and Patrick here for the next region. Okay, Will and Patrick. Well, this is gonna be easy though. Oregon. 
That's me. Ducks. Yep. Let's go. Yeah. Way too easy. All right. Uh, number 12, McNeese. Team that Will likes. Cowboys. That is absolutely correct. All right. Two to two. I told you. All right. Uh, Will, we got number 13, Samford. Samford, not to be missed up with Stanford. Samford. I don't know where Samford is. Do I. I don't Alabama. know their colors. Blue and red. I don't know. The Samford, the Samford and Sons. It used the to be Samford. Samford. Howard, you, I'll give you. I'll give you a good hint that you've uh, used this one already. Okay. No, that is my hint. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, you, the Samford Wildcats. No. Oh, can I have it? Can I have it? <laughs> oh, you want to pick it up? Okay, go ahead. Bulldog. There you go. Ding, ding, ding. Oh. Well, we can't give you the point. That's all right, but it's all right, okay. okay. All right. Um, much, well, much better next up for Patrick, we got four, number 14, Akron. Zips. Ah. Yeah. That's an easy one, That's but I got the Ducks. Easy. That's true. All right, number 15, St. Peter's. And the, here's a hint. It's the oh. only D1 mascot is this mascot for St. Peter's. There's no other team that has this team mascot. Name? Yeah, team name. Team name. This only one. Um, only one. Sa- the entire country. Uh, and this is for the tie. If I don't get this, Patrick wins over me. Yep. Um. I have I have no idea, but I have a little something in my head, a little kernel of something that I'm just going to build on. The St. Peter's Nuns. Is that your final answer? <laughs> I want it to be now. <laughs> that is not even close. They're the Peacocks. <laughs> oh, I had a nun's hat for some reason attached to St. Peter's, you know, like a habit type thing. Yeah. Um, so Patrick uh, wins. You can give him his last one. All right, last one was Grambling, number sixteen. Grambling. Any idea? I think I'd have gotten this. Grambling. Crap! It's I only know them as Grambling. Very generic kind of yeah. Team name. Rawr. I'd probably go wild. Not cat. the only one in the country. Rawr. No. It's the Tigers. There we go. It is the Tigers. It doesn't count anyways. So they are Tigers. You right. still get the win, Patrick. You still you still, still get, get the win. win. So final me versus Laverty. All right, Laverty. Here we go. South region. And we'll start with Will. Number 11, NC State. NC State. Wolfpack. That is absolutely correct. All right. Well, this one was mentioned, so you might get this one. Number 12, James Madison. Oh, that's the Duke. That is absolutely correct. Are you is your mic on establishment, James? No, he turned it Is off. It? It's okay. What was your What was your answer? The Dukes. There we go. The Dukes. That's absolutely correct. I like your mic being off most of the time, for the record, <laughs> but but you need it on during your answer. <laughs> it may have been my fault, but it's fine. It's his fault. Okay, number thirteen. We're going with Vermont. Will, what is number thirteen? Vermont. What is their team name? The Catamounts. That is absolutely correct. Um, James, we have number fourteen, Oakland. Oakland. This one I did not know at all. Uh, the, we need a guess here, buddy. They have the athletics. That is incorrect. They are the Golden Grizzlies. Uh, that, makes Golden sense. Grizzlies. Mm, that makes sense up there. All right. So this is for the win for now. Yes, this, this is the win. This is for the win. All right. Number fifteen, Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky for Will. It's been real fun playing with you there, young establishment. But this one I'm taking to the house. Patrick gets the win, but not 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 in this round. Patrick over Will, Will over James is the lesson. It's the Hilltoppers. But actually, technically not really correct. <laughs> it's what? Big Red. Whew. They're the Big Red Hilltoppers, but yes. Oh, I got it. <laughs> you got it. You got it. And that will conclude. So Will, I think, is just, you know. An overall winner. Patrick said he was going to smoke everybody. He I, barely I skated by me. I'm I'm glad I moderated. I'm glad I moderated because I know none, of, absolutely none of these. We should have had it also. We could expand this. Like, where is this college? Yep. What are its colors? I, I don't know the, how we do on any of that stuff in the NCAA tournament bracket. All right, that's fun quiz. Uh, how much do you know in your March Madness bracket actually about these teams? Do you even know their name? Um, all right. 
Let's get to the Shohei Otani scandal and the way that sports is suffering through an earthquake or leaping forward with ground shaking like a trampoline under its feet with story number two. The story around Shohei Otani potentially having gambled $4.5 million illegally in California continues to grow. Of course, originally this was blamed on his interpreter, with the explanation being that Shohei Otani was paying off the gambling debts that his interpreter, who makes $300,000 a year, uh, racked up to a bookie. It's hard to understand how any bookie in the country would run a tab of $4.5 million to a guy who makes $300,000 a year. In fact, Noted gambler, I believe, um, and radio host Craig Carton said that that would never happen. There's no bookie that would take that. He also said something fascinating. He said, any degenerate gambler um, knows that when you go deep into the hole, you start betting on things that you know. So the explanation that the interpreter or Otani perhaps only ever betted on soccer or NFL or NBA, but not baseball, doesn't quite like the entire story survive the smell test. We'll continue to keep up with this story because it could threaten even legal action against baseball's best player. But it got me thinking about the way that sports is changing. This is not separable from the overall embrace of gambling across the sports world. It is all over the place. And you can say that it always has been, but that's not the same thing as seeing a gambling ad everywhere you go, having it in your phone, in your hand, at all moments. This is a fundamental change in our relationship, not just with sports, but with the athletes themselves inside of sports. Why should we believe they're not gambling? And we continue to get more and more stories of guys who are. Ivan Tony, a guy in the English Premier League, as well, a similar story, gambling. Um, and it's just one way that sports, and we've talked about it so much here on the Will Kane Show with NIL, changing college sports, turning this into a semi pro league collectives are now the big focus you know um collectives are really totally divorced from the idea of name image and likeness it's not sponsorship driven it's which alumni can pool money together to pay players to come play for their college transfers with guys transferring all over the place there's a huge story this week and if you don't keep up with college recruiting or you know you may not have heard this but one of the top offensive linemen in the country a year ago came out of the state of Iowa. He committed to Alabama. He went and played left tackle for Alabama his freshman year and played. His name's Caden Proctor. When Nick Saban left, Caden Proctor entered the transfer portal and went back home to the place he was always destined to go, to be an Iowa Hawkeye. Caden Proctor was an Iowa Hawkeye for all of about two minutes. It was actually two months. He was there two months. And he's now announced he's going back in the transfer portal. It looks like he's going back to Alabama. Kirk Ferentz, the head coach at University of Iowa, gave happy talk about we want the young man to do whatever, you know, but he did come to Iowa for two months and drain us of our limited NIL funds. I don't know how much he got. I don't know how much of the percentage of the total NIL funds of Iowa he took. But what a system to go transfer and transfer back in two months while reaping NIL benefits. Whatever is happening, it is changing the relationship we know of for us with sports and sports with its very nature and history. Now, um, look, I know this can sound old man. I get it. Like, oh, no, it's changing. It's going to be worse. I'm not even sure I'm making the argument that it's going to be worse. But what I'm telling you is I think we are in the midst of the biggest shakeup of sports, at least in my lifetime. And I don't know what's going to be next. I don't know if it's going to be better. I don't know if it's going to be worse, but it's going to be drastically different. Sports by its very nature is tethered to the past. Obviously, statistically, we cage everything in what happened yesterday, what happened 10 years ago, what happened a generation ago. How do you compare Shohei Otani to Barry Bonds? How do we compare Patrick Mahomes to Joe Montana. We constantly, we're tethered, we're connected in, a, in an important way to the past. Also, personally, we're connected to the past. It's passed down to us by our fathers. It's generation to generation. We, we, we understand it through where we're born and raised and the teams we, we were granted through a birthright. Like It's just 
to act like we live in this vacuum of time and everything can be changed, you know, I don't know if the word would be willy nilly or just drastically, and it's all going to be for the better, to me, reeks of hubris. This is the very nature of the conservative versus the progressive debate, which we tend to think of as, you know, political, but it's actually cultural, it's societal. Like the idea of conservatism is that yesterday has some value. Tradition is there for a reason. If something survived thousands, perhaps hundreds of years of human history by its survival, we should give it some level of deference. We should be like, oh, I wonder why human beings continue to do things a certain way for a long period of time. Could it be by trial and error? Could it be they had some ancient wisdom? Could it be there was something to it? Or is it always like those people in the past were stupid, didn't know anything of what they were talking about. Today, we've got it all figured out. And whatever we're doing is better. And that's the mindset of progressive. Destroy tomorrow, build. Destroy yesterday, build tomorrow. It'll always be better. And all I'm saying is, we don't know which way this is going. You can turn your mic on now for one moment. Young James Establishment Laverty. You, you can turn your mic on. In the pre-show conversation, like you voiced the young man's position. I'm the old man. And you're like... Oh, everybody always says this. Free agency was going to ruin sports. You can jump in here if you're still there, establishment, James. Yep. You, this is what you think. You think uh, it'll all be fine, and it may be even better. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't say better. I just think it'll gradually change. And I think at the end of the day, the fundamentals of sports that people have their teams and they go to a bar and they sit down with their buddies and they watch the games. Like, sure, like every now and then they're like, oh, this guy's making this amount of money, but it it doesn't really deter you from watching the sport. I can't. I can't think of and anyone. And I get who, it. Yeah. I I get it that every generation thinks that the next generation is carrying them to hell in a handbasket. I understand that, and that we always like the way the where things were when we grew up. I guess what I'm saying in, in the end, though, is like you keep Jimmy in with it, you keep Jack in with it in some very fundamental ways. You turn the sports in person into an elitist event that's too expensive for the common man. You 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 carve up the sports rights in so many different ways that you got to have 10 different subscriptions to watch a team play you you inject it with betting both from the fan's perspective and the player's perspective you allow it you know free transfers and college players getting paid and all i'm saying is you're changing it and you can argue on each and every single one of those that you're changing it for the better but I would just say have some humility. I don't know that it will be for the better. I don't know that it will be worse. But I know that we are, in my lifetime, inside the gears of sports as entertainment. We're deep inside the inner workings, and we're changing it. We're not messing around on the margins, okay? We're not fine-tuning the watch. We're reinventing it from the inside out. And if you think that won't change things, ask ask for somebody like young James, your granddad, for some of us, your dad, ask him about boxing in the 70s. You couldn't find a straight heterosexual male in the 1970s who didn't know the heavyweight champion. Who's the heavyweight champion in the world today? I don't know. Is it Anthony Joshua? I don't know. I mean, boxing messed with itself in so many different ways that it's completely irrelevant. Don't think whatever we have today is permanent. That tomorrow is just a bigger and better version of today. And I'm not saying yesterday is always better. I'm just saying have some humility when you work to rebuild something from the inside out at such a monumental level it's happening right now across the sports landscape. All right, let's get you set now. The tournament's kicked off. The games are kicked off, but that doesn't mean we can't nail down our final four and national champion with an expert, a guy who's covered it all season long. Many of us are just tuned in now. But John Fanta, Fox sports college basketball broadcaster has been there all season long and we'll break it all down with him next on the will kane show story number three fox sports college basketball broadcaster john fant has paid attention to the college basketball landscape all season long and he's here now to help us break down the final four and our national champion fox sports college basketball broadcaster john fanta on here with us on the will kane show what's up john Will, it's madness time, man. It's it's March. It's fun. It's great to be with you, my friend. Yeah, man. This is the best time of the year for every sports fan, but in particular for a guy like you, covers it 
college basketball year round. And because of that, you have unique insight for us. Because if we're being honest about the average sports fan, this is when we start watching college basketball. Maybe we watch conference tournaments. Maybe we tune in throughout the season for our, you know, devotion, our devoted um, university who we love. But we don't watch it at large. We don't see what's going on across the country. But we have you, you here to give us a broader scope of college basketball. So let's start with this, man. Give it to us. Final four. Well, I think that UConn will be there. They're the most dominant team in the sport. They're the best offensive team in the sport. Top 12 in defensive efficiency. Donovan Klingon takes everything away at the rim. The sophomore, he's a Bristol, Connecticut kid, Will. He stayed home. He stayed in his home state to play for the Huskies, who have five national titles since 1999. They've got the best point guard in the country. And Tristan Newton, AP first team All-American. And you go down the line. Cam Spencer, Alex Caravan, their ability to make shots from the perimeter. Stefan Castle as a, a defensive player, just a freshman. He'll get drafted in June to the pros. And this is a team that just is complete. Uh, Dan Hurley's done a wonderful job. I like the Huskies. I like Arizona. Uh, I've got the Wildcats going on to the Final Four, playing in their home state of Arizona for the Final Four. Home court advantage, maybe. We'll see. They brought in Caleb Love, a transfer from North Carolina. Arizona could get North Carolina in the Elite Eight. That would be dramatic. I like Zona. I've got Houston, toughest team in college hoops. Kelvin Sampson has done an amazing job with the Cougars. In year one in the Big 12, which is the best conference in college basketball, Houston is 30-4. and four. Jamal Shedd, Jamal Shedd, learn the name now. He is tough as you know what. And then rounding out that Final Four, I like Tennessee. I've got the Volunteers. Rick Barnes makes that elusive Final Four with the Vols. They've got a score named Dalton Connect from Northern Colorado, totally off the national map, to being the second best player in the country to produce Zach Eady. Connect is the best scorer in college basketball. Boring. Two ones and two twos. <laughs> UConn and Houston at the one seeds and uh, Tennessee and Arizona as the two seeds. Don't you want, John, like every one of us filling out brackets, don't you want to – you at the same time you don't want to do the you don't want to be the guy that goes scratch you don't want to be the guy that only does ones and two seeds and by the way if i'm being honest i have three one seeds and a four in my final four so i didn't want it to but i didn't want it to be that way john because i don't i know a it never ends up that way it actually rarely ends up the way that both you and i have predicted it and b it's boring you don't win your bracket by going chalk no you don't you got to be different uh, if there were a team outside the top four, that total wild card, it's 11 seed New Mexico. Uh, I really like their team with Richard Patino, Rick Sun coaching them, Jalen House, Jamal Mashburn Jr. Uh, that might make some basketball fans feel a little bit older, Jamal Mashburn's son. Uh, Jalen House is Eddie House's son. Uh, that they, They've got a, a group that that really plays hard, plays well defensively. They're an 11 seed. Here's why you should pick a wild card, and, and I, I'm not following my own words. But 13 straight years that a team seeded worse than four, meaning five, six, seven, eight, nine, has made the final four. So somebody's going to emerge. I just got to be honest with you, I don't love the middle of the country this year. I just don't think there's a lot of great teams. I will say Tom Izzo and Michigan State seem to just find their groove during the big dance and an impressive performance. Uh, against Mississippi State in the opening round. Yeah, I took Mississippi State. Uh, you know, how about I'm going to run a few other uh, long shots or wild cards through you real quick and just tell me what you think. So I actually also like New Mexico. I have them going pretty far. I like McNeese State a little bit. I like um, I like St. Mary's, although they're a five seed. I like St. Mary's. Um, and I can't remember. I feel like I had one more deep seed that made a good run in in my tournament bracket but um it's it's what we all do oh um tell me so i have samford beating kansas because i don't believe in kansas and is it kansas would it be samford mcneese if i have them in the second round so it would. It maybe would be samford maybe McNeese, which could very well happen well so that's why i have mcneese going to the sweet 16 so what do you think about my my long shots I love it. And McNeese has a kid named Shahade Wells, who's one of the best scorers in college basketball. He's a bucket. They have three other guys that are in double figures. Will Wade has done a remarkable job down at McNeese. 
I mean, they hadn't been in the NCAA tournament in over two decades before he now gets there. And in year one, is just he won't be there long. He's going to get a high major job. He'll, he'll be on the radar at plenty of places with his uh, NCAA violations uh, in the rearview mirror now. But, Will, you can never deny Will's coaching. Will's a heck of a coach. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I really, really like um, I really like this team, this McNeese team. And I do find that Gonzaga's overrated. Four weeks ago, they were on the bubble. They beat St. Mary's on the road, but they lost in the WCC tournament. Why is Gonzaga on the five line? I, I don't trust this Gonzaga team. Remember they had Drew Timmy last year, that veteran big. They, they haven't been able to really – they have a kid named Graham Ike who's, who's been a good player. They have Ryan Nemhart, but they don't have depth. They don't have depth, and McNeese does have some depth. As for Sanford, Bucky Ball, Bucky McMillan and Sanford, great story. This is a guy who's just – he's earned everything he's gotten, and he has developed an offense – that is top five in bench points, top 15 in tempo. They run the floor. Kansas is injured. I love those picks in that pot. Let's talk about some of the best stories really quickly. Everyone's talking about Long Beach State. So Dan Monson fired, uh, his contract not renewed before his conference tournament. They go on a run, win the conference tournament. He's in the NCAA tournament. He says he's coaching for free. He says he's, he's, a, he's a dead man walking. Has compared himself to George Costanza in Seinfeld. Um, everyone's talking about that story out of Long Beach. What are, if you gave me one or two other of your favorite stories we should watch this tournament. Well, in the last hour, as we're talking, the Long Beach State Athletic Director, Bobby Smitherin, is asking for credit for firing his coach because he feels that it <laughs> motivated his team. Bobby, I love it. All, lean in. Yeah, lean, lean in, Bobby. If You shouldn't be allowed to watch your team play in person for saying that. I mean, come on, man. Like that. That is you're you're taking credit for firing someone who then who then succeeded for your school. What whatever uh, other other stories you're that, I, that I really, yeah other other stories that I really like in this tournament. Um, I like James Madison, Mark Byington, and James Madison. The Dukes they can knock off Wisconsin, and I feel that they will. Uh, Thirty one and three season. You know, remarkable job that they've done. They had a great college football season. It's a very underrated school in America. So I'm I'm fascinated by that. Uh, you know, you go down the line, like, I don't mind Yale. Uh, I, I think that on the Ivy League, they're very balanced. They're top 15 and fewest turnovers per game. I really, really like what Bruce Pearl's done with Auburn. Auburn's got to get through that game. If they do, sometimes the first one's the hardest. Auburn can make the Final Four. Like, Bruce Pearl continues to run one of the best programs in America, SEC tournament champions, uh, and and to win the Southeastern Conference tournament this year. That that's toughness, that's depth. So I'm looking at Bruce Pearl as being somebody that could end up being a star of this tournament with the job he's done with this program. You know what I'm kind of fascinated by is the the college coach that's just a really good college coach, but for some reason you know, we come to know the Roy Williams of the world, the Mike Shashevskys of the world, the John Cheneys of the world, who are who are institutions um, and, and directly tied to their institution. Roy Williams, of course, tied to two now, but that's by his own choice. What I'm fascinated by is the guy who clearly can coach, but has to do it in multiple locations. You know, um, I, I've mentioned it this week. I'm a burned Texas Longhorn fan, but th to watch Shaka Smart succeed at Marquette, I mean, the guy can coach. To watch Rick Barnes do it yet again at Tennessee, the guy can coach, yes. and and it it didn't go well at Texas, and there could be a lot of reasons for that. But Bruce Pearl's another great example. Like what what is, I don't know if it's his second go around, third go around, but everywhere he's been, and look, Calipari's like this. You know, there there are guys like this everywhere they go. You know, success follows. Success follows. You know, I I, I love that point. And I think that uh, it's interesting to see, like, a shock of smart going in this tournament. The last time he made the second weekend, this is an interesting story. He has not made the Sweet 16, Will, since VCU all the way back 12 years ago. So he's got a lot of pressure on him heading into this tournament. Cal, all eyes are on Cal, always. Like, when are we not interested in Kentucky and what John Calipari is going to do? He has not made a Sweet 16 since 2019. You got to make it this year. 
you're going to have two top yeah. five draft picks in Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard, his dad was Final Four MVP back in the day uh, for Kentucky. Mom also played at Kentucky. It's a great Kentucky story. If you haven't seen Reed Shepard play America, you got to check this kid out. He's a stud. He's got elite feel for the game. And then he's got a backcourt mate named Rob Dillingham, who is a, a burst of speed in transition. Just a fantastic talent. So I do look at a couple of those big time coaching names. I think they've got a they they success has happened in their careers. Some of them have a chip on their shoulder heading into this tournament because I think a lot of people are doubting Cal right now and his ability to win in the tournament. You know who else has a big tournament here? John Shire. You take over for Mike Shashevsky. What's the expectation at Duke? Will to make Final Fours? Last year, they won a game and then we're out. If they just win one game and get out again, you know what's going to happen. People are immediately going to say, yeah. well, is John Shire the answer to keep Duke basketball going? Well, that's a warning to Kalen DeBoer taking over for Nick Saban at, at Alabama. But the thing is, like, let's say Calipari doesn't make the Sweet 16. Let's say Calipari is fired. Like, wherever he goes next, congratulations. You're going to be good. You're about yeah. to be good. Oh, it's the same thing I'm talking about with, with Bruce Pearl. Um, hey, I saw my producer sent me an interview you did with Bill Murray. I saw the interview with Bill Murray. Here's what I want to know. Intimidating interview. Like I've seen the interviews because you don't know the Bill Murray you're going to get, right? Like, is he into it? Is he not into it? Does he make you sort of the, he has sort of a passive aggressive style with his comedy sometimes that I've seen with some guys where it gets tense. You had something going for you, which is his son on the UConn staff. And he was happy to talk about the, the, his son, his family. And you, and you talked mostly about that. Really good interview, by the way. Got some personality out of him um, as well. How intimidated were you to interview Mil Bill Murray? Really not intimidated. Uh, so I, I have always – somebody told me this once when I got, got ready to sit down with Patrick Healy for an interview. This is a number of years ago. And someone said, just be a guy. Just be a person. Like, just, just be a regular human. They do not like when you get mm -hmm. like, and I'm 28. So in all honesty, Bill's prime came before my time. <laughs> so he wasn't that big a deal to you, John Fanta. <laughs> a little bit. Like, you know, I've watched Caddyshack. I love, I love Caddyshack. I love Ghostbusters. I love all of Bill's hits, but you know, I love Groundhog Day. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't like, like, it's a little bit before my time. So for me, it was like, the. I always say, the worst thing that someone can say to you when you request an interview, I'm sure you can relate, is no. If they say no, so what? We'll move on. They're lost. Like, if he said no to me, I was going to move on with my night. But he goes, sure. I'll, he actually asked his son's wife. He asked his daughter-in-law, am I allowed to do this? He actually asked his daughter-in-law, am I allowed to do this? Because I think he said in the interview that, you know, he wasn't the best father. And it was interesting to oh, hear I that. Oh, I saw that part. Yeah, like that was yeah. interesting to hear that he just admitted openly, like, look, I, I was a celebrity. I'm not the best parent. I kind of appreciated that. He was pretty raw and honest. But you know what? It was almost as if he was avenging some of the early fatherhood trouble now by being able to watch his son go to the Final Four. Things had come full circle for him. He was funny. Uh, I kind of made, you know, I said, I'm going to Houston, Bill, for the Final Four. This was last year. I said, what can you recommend? And he said, well, to you. Maybe a country fried steak. And I go, you're right. I, I, I'm I a country fried steak kind of guy. So I love talking no, with Bill Murray. No, he didn't say that, John. He did not yes. say that to you. And you messed it up in the interviews. The one thing I you did. messed up, he corrected you. And you haven't even gotten it right here one year later. I understand that some people call it a country fried steak. It's called a chicken fried steak. <laughs> and <laughs> the thing is, you're not wrong by calling it a country fried steak, but you're not right either. You know, right. like you just you, you sound like somebody from the Northeast <laughs> or Cleveland. Not where you're welcome from. back on this show again, calling it a country fried steak. It's a chicken fried steak. I will not get that wrong. Again. I love I love his recommendation to you. Go to a fancy steakhouse and ask them if you can chicken fry if they can chicken fry your steak. It goes over really well. <laughs> um, you know, you said something that I totally agree with. Just be a person. Just be a dude. Just be a guy. Like, and then, you know, if they're the same, if they can be a guy, then it's going to go, it's going to go fine. Sometimes they can't, sometimes they can't be normal people. And then you, you know, it is what it is, but so many television interviewers or radio or whatever, just, they, they get tense, they become overly TV or they are too scripted. 
Um, and it's just so it's not a human moment. And you did. You did a good job of making it a human moment. A uh, quick more before we turn back to basketball. You're 28. And yet you've seen not only Caddyshack, but Ghostbusters and, and Groundhog Day. We had this conversation with some of my producers earlier this week here on the Will Kane Show. Rite of passage movies. For my age group, Caddyshack was a rite of passage movie. Now, I'm not in the age group that would have seen Caddyshack in the theater, but it was still around a decade later that in college, like everybody's like, oh, we got to sit down and watch Caddyshack. You know, and I'm, I'm clearly not old enough to be a godfather in the moment guy either, but I knew enough some 20, 25 years later to be like, oh, yeah, we're supposed to watch Godfather, rite of passage movie. And I was surprised one of my producers is younger than you, but he's seen Caddyshack. So do you think, is that like a rite of passage movie? Like a movie that dudes have to see? Absolutely. Still? A absolutely. I mean, it came out before my time, but I remember getting to about 11, 12, and my dad sat me down on the couch and he had me watch that movie. He had me watch Shawshank Redemption. He had oh, me yes. watch Tommy Boy with Chris Farley. Like, <laughs> End of story. We You had to sit down and watch some of these. Caddyshack is a no doubt about it movie that lives on forever. It will always be I great. I think so. It, it will never not be good. And the soundtrack for Caddyshack, Kenny Loggins, extremely underrated. Mm -hmm. So Caddyshack is right up there. Some of the funniest movies are golf movies. They really are. Golf, boxing, baseball. Golf three best categories for sports movies. I think that's the, that's if, if, hold on, if we're making a Mount Rushmore, you, you need four golf, baseball, boxing. What's football. the next best category of not football. It doesn't make it. Did you say football? You think? Well, not I mean, enough I good football like, movies. The Titans, Rudy. Um, you know, I was thinking like, I mean, I, I laugh at longest yard. Um, you know, I'm, uh, we I'm are not Marshall. sure it is football. Yeah, those are those are good movies, but they're not the same level of the other three movie categories, sports categories we just gave. I was thinking about basketball, basketball diaries. Um, I don't know. Got to find that fourth movie for the Mount Rushmore of uh, mo fourth sport for the Mount Rushmore. Do you go with a sea biscuit? Like, do you do you get into the horses? Horse racing. Does that do anything for racing? you? Racing. I haven't seen Boys in the Boat either, so I'm super into rowing right now. So I got to see Boys in the Boat. Um, all right, let's go back to the tournament with John Fanta. Um, let's move on from the Final Four to your national championship. Um, my national championship pick has been mentioned. I gave you my Final Four. Uh, my national championship game. Uh, no, I didn't give you my Final Four. I have three ones and a four, I told you. Those are Houston, uh, North Carolina, Purdue, and Auburn are my final four. And my Auburn analysis was very similar to yours. Like, can they get past Yale? Now, I've seen the statistical stuff on slow teams like Yale win like 80% of the times over high offense, you know, octane teams like Auburn. But Auburn also plays defense. They're just good across the board. Um, so I do think Auburn gets past Yale. I do think they go on a run. I don't want to be a front runner and pick UConn. Yet I went with three other number ones. My championship game is Auburn versus Purdue. Auburn taking it. I'm a big believer in Houston. You point out Houston's won 30 games. McNeese has won 30 games. James Madison has won 30 games. Winning 30 games, pretty good marker in college basketball. But Houston has an injury right now, I believe. I can't remember who it is, but it's a pretty significant injury. And that made me a little worried about Houston combining it with their big loss to Iowa State. But I've been a believer all season in Houston, and I wanted to pick Houston. But my national championship game is Auburn Purdue with the champion being Auburn. What's yours? UConn versus Tennessee with the champion being UConn. Uh, they go back to back for the first time since Florida 06 07. As for the Houston injury, it's to Joseph Tugler, who's a, a big, he only averaged about three points per game. It's 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 no offense at all to him. Obviously, it's a it's an absence. But you know, I I LJ Cryer and Jamal Shedd are two of the best guards in the country. And with Calvin Sampson, you know that Emmanuel Sharp's going to help him. Jawan Roberts, Damian Dunn, they've got enough toughness inside. They don't have a legit center, but they just guard. Like, their versatility defensively makes them such a great team. The loss of Tugler to me, it's not a – a lot of people are like, well, they're, Houston's banged up. Okay, they, they lost a reserve for the end of the season. Like, 
Jamal Shedd's an All-American, and Cryer's one of the best players in the country, too. He's, he's as good a shooter as anybody. Kelvin Sampson will tell you, no excuses. No excuses. It's why, over the last five years, Kelvin Sampson's won more games than anyone. You know, he, he really, he, he's been the winningest coach in the last five years in college basketball. The guy at Houston. He's made them a, an absolute juggernaut. But I'm going to go UConn and Tennessee because I think for the first time, Tennessee actually isn't just defensively oriented. They've got enough scoring. And, Will, I've, I've, I'm probably to a fault because I've seen Connecticut so much in the Northeast, but I'm just trying to rationalize how they get beat. And that's where March Madness comes in. The unthinkable becomes reality. But I don't see the Huskies getting picked off. All right, there it is. There's your picks for the next few weeks in college basketball, the best time of the year in sports with Fox Sports College Basketball broadcaster John Fanta. Thank you so much, John. You were awesome. Glad to have you on the Will Kane Show. Will, anytime. Enjoy the madness, everybody. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that conversation with John Fanta. Check him out as he covers college basketball tournament from Brooklyn on uh, Fox Sports Digital this weekend throughout the NCAA and throughout the NCAA tournament. That's going to do it for me today here on the sports edition of the Will Kane Show. I'll see you again next time.